Before. Good evening, teacher. Ah, a new look. Good evening. How are you? Very fine. Thank you. That's very good. And you? Good. I'm very happy because we are starting this last week. We are almost yes. done. So it is a very good thing. And we are just going to have after this one just three more days. So almost, almost done with all of that thing. So. Okay. Are, yes. So we are going to start with a uh, this uh, day. This is the first day of the week number four, and we are just going to have a couple of topics in which we are like going to, to develop uh, for today and for tomorrow. We are going to develop the topic of the future tenses. Um. You know that we have uh, three tenses in English, that is the past, present, and future. And in this case, we are going to talk about the future tense, but also we have four uh, tenses per uh, main tense. In this case, we are going to learn about the four tenses that we can find in future. And we are going to talk about the uh, structures uh, the way in which we can express our ideas and our plans in the future. And we are going to divide it into two uh, sessions because we are going to use two tenses for this uh, session and two tenses for this session that we are going to have tomorrow. Then we are going to uh, talk about future, but using a present tense. And we are going to learn how to use that present tense to express things um, in the future. So in that case, we are going to talk about future also, but using a present structure. And then for the day number four, we are going to have two short uh, topics. Um, in that case, we are going to have two topics in the last day, but they are very short. Uh, one of them is uh, the use of some uh, verbs when we are taking a call. And the other topic, is we are going to develop an exercise that is on the, on the platform, but we are going to uh, have that exercise because we need to, to explain something about that exercise that we have on the platform. So in that case, in the last day, we are going to perform that exercise and we are going to have the explanation or something related to that, um, to that exercise. So we're going to begin with the future tenses and we are going to see what are the tenses that we are going to develop today. We are going to have general information as always. And then we are going to see some examples uh, of these uh, tenses. And we are going to see the first thing. So give me a moment to put the screen and all other things because we have here, sure. tell me. This is the last week. This is the last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are almost done with uh, this, uh, this uh, month. So we are in the last four days. So we have the, the sentence here. Start by doing what's necessary, then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. So in this case, we are going to begin doing what is necessary for you and for the things that you want to develop in your life. Then you are uh, going to do what is possible to achieve the goals that you have. And then at the end, you are going to do the things that you think that are impossible for you. So in this case, um, we can e express that idea into uh, that we are doing things step by step, little by little, and then we are going to complete all the things that we didn't imagine to perform to gain the things that we want. 
Así que vamos a empezar poco a poco a hacer las cosas que necesitamos para llegar a nuestro o a nuestra meta, haciendo las cosas que son necesarias para nuestro trabajo, para nuestro esfuerzo. Luego, de una manera que no imaginamos, vamos a comenzar a hacer las cosas que son posibles para llegar a nuestra meta. Y por último, vamos a hacer las cosas que creíamos imposibles, pero que poco a poco las estamos realizando y no nos damos cuenta. So, the thing is that we need to, to keep fighting, we need to, to keep working, and we need to, to continue with the things that we are doing because we are going to complete our things and we are going to go to the main goal at the end. So you are going to have the things that you need. So we are going to begin it with this uh, session. So we are going to see two tenses of the future and we are going to talk about the future simple that is uh, the, the base of this uh, structure or the base of this tense. And then we are going to see the future continuous. So in this case, we are going to have information about the future simple. We are going to see the form and we are going to see how to create sentence in positive, negative, and in question with the structure of the future symbol. Then we are going to see the uses of this structure and the examples. And then we are going to change and we are going to have the future continue in the same way. We are going to have the information for the future continuous, the form, how to create sentence in positive, negative in question. We are going to talk about the uses of this structure. And then we are going to have like uh, something to remember and an activity if we have time. If not, we are going to perform the activity tomorrow at the beginning of the session. So we are going to start with future symbol. That is the first uh, tense that we are going to develop uh, right now. Remember, this one is a review of information that we have about the future chances. It is not like you don't know anything about this one, but we are going to make a review and remember things that we know about the future chances. So we are going to begin with future simple. And another thing, if you see that the document is working kind of slow, it's because um, I'm converting another video or uh, the previous uh, session. So it's going to act kind of weird because of the, the effort that the computer is doing. So it's kind of of that, but it is, uh, I think it's going to, to convert the video in a couple of minutes. So it is not like we are going to have a, a lot of trouble with that. So it's just something that I want to say. So in this case, we have the general description of the future simple. And in this case, it said, the future simple is used to talk about a time later than now and can be used in lot of different ways. So, so that is the thing that we need to, to do right now to know in which cases we are going to use the future simple. But in this case, you are talking about something that is going to happen, but remember, when we are using will, that is the thing that we know about the future. When you are using will is because you are not too sure that 
uh, that action is going to happen. Because in that case, it's something um, that is not certain, but you think it's going to happen in the future. But when you are using going to, is something that you are sure that is going to happen. So that is the difference between will and going to. So in this case, it's just to remember that when you are using will is for uh, some things that you are not too sure that they are going to happen in the future. Así que esa es como una de las diferencias más grandes que tenemos del will y el going to. Que si utilizamos el will es para cosas que no estamos tan seguros de que vayan a pasar, nos gustaría que pasaran o estamos haciendo como una predicción de que va a pasar, pero no es tan seguro de que pase. En cambio, con el going to es cuando estamos seguros de que va a pasar y ya tenemos como todo preparado para que pase. So in that case, we have two different uh, expressions and what are they, their uses or in the way that we can use will and going to. But now we are going to see the form of the uh, future simple. In this case, we're not going to use just a structure. In this case, we're going to have different parts or elements that we need to know about the form of the future simple. So we are going to see the form. Okay, in this case, we have some elements that we need to know about the future simple. So in this case, the first thing is that this structure is made up of the verb will or once, that is the negative form of will, plus the base infinitive. In this case, you know that the infinitive form of the verb is in that case in which we add to and the verb, but in this case, you are not going to use to, you are just going to use the verb. 
So we have the structure will or want plus a base infinity verb. Then because will is a model verb, it doesn't change it depending on the person doing the action. So in this case, you are not like uh, adding the F or ES or something like this at the end of this uh, this verb, because uh, that is the rule of the third person singular, but in this case, it's not going to happen because they are like an auxiliary or in this case, a model verb. And in that case, it doesn't change depending on the person that is doing the action. Then we can use contraction and we have the example, I will or I'll. And then the negative form, in the negative form, we can also use will not for more emphasis. In this case, it's like, uh, we are going to use both of them, but uh, if you want to, to make more emphasis on the things that you are saying, you are going to use will not. And want is more common in speech than in the written form. In that case, you are going to use will not. Because in, you know that in English, we have like two different things in which we are going to express or say the things. And one is in the speech or the speaking thing. And in the other one is when you are writing, that is completely different because in some cases in um, the writing a thing, you need to be more formal than when you are speaking. And in short answers, we are going to say yes. For example, yes, I will, or yes, you will, or yes, she will, or no, I want, no, she want, or no, we want. Así que aquí tenemos las cosas más importantes de lo que es el futuro simple. Primero, que lo vamos a crear utilizando el will o el want con el verbo en forma infinitiva sin el to al principio. Luego, como este es un eh, verbo modal, no va a utilizar esa estructura de la tercera persona en singular. No es necesario que le cambiemos eh, nada, sino que va a funcionar igual para todos los sujetos. No importa quién haga la acción, siempre se va a escribir de la misma forma. Eh, lo que le decía, la parte escrita y la parte hablada es totalmente diferente en este sentido, porque en muchos de los casos la parte escrita es mucho más formal eh, y sigue muchas más reglas que la parte eh, hablada. En la parte hablada lo que importa en muchos de los casos es que se nos comprenda lo que estamos tratando de explicar eh, o podernos comunicar con otros. No es tan necesario seguir las reglas como nosotros las conocemos, pero en la parte escrita sí, se tiene que ser más formal a la hora de escribir, porque si no estaríamos cayendo en eh, lo informal, en lo, en lo no muy profesional. So in that case, we have two different ways in which can, we can express uh, the ideas. In the written form, more formal, and in the uh, speaking thing, we are going to be like more informal and friendly and something like that. So we are going to see the examples of the positive, negative, and question form of this uh, real um, model verb or the uh, use that we can give to this uh, structure. So I'm going to write a, or create a table in which I'm going to write the examples of the positive, negative, and question with will. In this case, we're just using will. We are not talking about going to, that is another thing. So in this case, we are just going to use will. For these examples, I'm going to use the same verb. And in this case, it's because we are just making the example. So in that case, you are going to see that in positive, in negative, and in question, you are going to have the same 
a verb. But in this case, it's because I'm like trying to explain how to write these sentences depending on the pronouns that you have. But in this case, we are not going to change the verb. In this case is just the same example in the three different things or in the three different categories. And we are going to have all the subjects or in this case, all the pronouns with the same sentence. So let's see. So in the positive statements, you can see that we are like creating very simple sentences. In this case, you have just three elements that you can write in this uh, sentence, but you know that in this case, it's just for the example and you can write long sentences because in that case, you want to say more things, not just this one. But we have, I will travel. That is uh, the uh, structure, the subject, then the will, and then the verb. And in this case, you can see that in the third person, he, she, it, we are not going to change anything in the verb travel because this um, model verb is uh, modifying the uh, pronoun. So in that case, it is not necessary to add the S um, at the end of the verb. But I have, yes, it is done. Okay, so in this case, you can change uh, the verbs, uh, the verb you want, for example, I will travel, you will play, and we are soccer, um, he will eat an apple, she will learn French, I mean French, then it will play with the ball. We will read the book. You will go to the supermarket. Then they will play the guitar. So in that case, you can see that we can change. We can add uh, different things to the, the sentence that we have. In that case, you are going to have the verb. And then you can add uh, all the things that you want to say in the sentence. So in that case, you can like make long sentence. Tell me, Emerson. Teacher, eh, entonces el will lo usamos cuando vamos a hacer una acción que realmente no sabemos si va a pasar. Yes, in si that no case. Estamos seguros. Uh -huh. In that case, for example, you can say that you, mm, you will eat fish tomorrow. Usted va a comer pescado mañana, pero no está realmente seguro, sino que usted tiene una idea de que eso es lo que va a hacer. Pero ¿qué pasa al final? Maybe you find something different to eat. Uh, you don't feel like eating fish at the end, but you have the idea. In this case, will is for an idea that we have, but maybe something will change in the future. We have another thing that changed that possibility, or 
when you are using the going to, I'm going to eat the fish because you have that a fish in your house and you have your food uh, done and you take to the to your job, for example. But in this case, it's just an idea of the future that maybe can change with another action, but it is not like very, very secure that it's going to happen. Maybe yes, maybe not. So for that reason is that will is not for it. things that we are really, really sure that we are going to do. In that case, we are going to use going to, to express things that we are 100% sure that we are going to do in the future. Ok, entonces eh, podemos decir que cuando Celine Dion hizo la canción My Heart with Go On, no estaba segura si lo iba a seguir. That's sure, that's true. Very good. So, in that case, we are like finding that expression in, in that kind of things. So, in the negative one, we are going to write the same sentence, but in this case, we are going to make it negative. We have two forms. We have said that we have two forms. In this case, we're going to uh, use will not or won't. That in this case is depending on the way that you feel is saying will not or won't or writing will not or won't, but it is depending on you, but you have two options to make your negative uh, uh, sentence in this case. So in this case, it's, it's very easy to create a negative sentence because in this case, you know that we are just going to use a not. In this case, you're not going to use the auxiliary um, has a, or have or do or don't and did and all of the things. In this case, you're just going to write not. A, in this case, it's just to make it a negative or you can make the contraction with want. So in this case, it is not necessary to add another thing. So just to add not, and you are ready to write your negative sentence. Then for the questions, you know that in questions, in every question that we are going to make, in this case, when you are not using the DWH words or the WH question words, you are going to change the uh, order of the words that you have. En este caso, cuando tenemos las preguntas que no estamos utilizando las WH words o las WH words, siempre vamos a tener que cambiar un poco el orden de las palabras. In this case, you are going to write the um, will at the beginning of the sentence. Then you are going to write the subject. And at the end, you are going to write the verb. And also adding the question uh, mark. Así que ya saben que para las preguntas siempre le cambiamos, ¿verdad? Lo que es el orden de el eh, sujeto con lo que ya sea el verbo to be, pero en este caso no estamos utilizando el verbo to be, sino que estamos utilizando el, eh, en este caso, ¿verdad? Lo que es el, el modal verb will. Así well. que, tell me, Irma. O sea que want 
Es la contracción de will not. Exactamente, es la contracción de will not. Ok, gracias. Good, you're welcome. Así que en este caso vamos a escribir primero will, then el subject, que es nuestro pronombre, and then we are going to write the verb. Siempre que hagamos pregunta, yo sé que es algo very, very basic in this case, but it happens that when we are writing, we forget to write um, the question mark sometimes. And it's like something that we, maybe we are writing kind of fast or we are thinking about another thing, but maybe we make this mistake. But we need to keep in mind that we are going to write the question mark at the end of the a sentence or this question. So we are going to transform this a sentence, this positive sentence into question. So let's see what is the result. So in that case, we have like the question. Tell me, Aleli. Sí, teacher. Una pregunta negativa, ¿cómo sería? Won't you? Or will not you? Will Adeli. I not? In that case, you can write won't. Won't I travel? Or will not I travel in that case? Mm. Pero es que eso como pregunta negativa suena como una afirmación negativa. Tú no ¿Verdad harás? que tú no Ajá. irás al viaje? Algo así se oye. Ajá. Pero se puede dar el caso. Yes, you can do it, but it is not very common. Como que no quiero que él vaya al viaje. Mm -hmm. O sea, se oiría también con una connotación bastante negativa de, de, de decir no, no me gustaría que que fueras. Mm, ok. Mm -hmm. Irma. O sea que lo podemos usar de las dos maneras, will not o want. Sí, lo pueden utilizar de las dos maneras, solo que ya les explicaba que el will not se utiliza más cuando están escribiendo un documento o cuando están haciendo un resumen o algo que se les ha pedido en el trabajo porque suena mucho más formal, porque es una versión más larga de, el, de la negativa pero cuando estamos hablando eh, nosotros o en este caso se puede decir que cuando se habla inglés eh, muchos de los speakers, de los native speakers eh, tratan de ahorrarse el tiempo, ¿verdad? En lugar de decir las frases largas, utilizan las, las frases cortas con, las, con la, estas contractions y cuando hablamos utilizamos el want pero usted puede utilizar cualquiera de los dos que usted quiera. Si a usted le gusta más el will not, usted utiliza solo el will not. Pero si a usted le gusta más el want, usted utiliza más el want. Así que ahí es a decisión de cada uno de nosotros. Ah, sí, gracias. Uh -huh. Teacher. 
tell me. Will you uh, like uh, English or Spanish? What I like the most or what? You speak uh, oh, the English or Spanish? My speaker? Yes. Oh, I mean, what I like the most to speak in English or to speak in Spanish? Le estoy preguntando que qué le gusta más, el inglés o el español. Yes, Yo creo I que le gusta that... más el inglés, ¿verdad? Um, it's like 50-50, I think. It's like mm -hmm. I like Spanish, but when I have the opportunity like this, I prefer to speak in English because I know that uh, we don't have a lot of opportunities to to practice and you know that we are in a country that is full of Spanish so it's kind of complicated to practice and to gain the or feel confident speaking in another language so I think that it, both of them has the good things but I prefer both so, so I, I, I like it both okay but if you feel like you need some feedback in Spanish, you can tell me because I know that you are like entering another um, level because you are going to be like in a higher level next to this one, I think. So um, it's very common you to hear the people that is giving you these sessions to just speak in English. So that's why I am saying that. If you need some feedback in Spanish, you can ask for it. So don't feel like a shame or something like that. So we are going to see the uses for this structure. So we are going to continue because we have here the examples and now we are going to see the uses. Vamos a ver los usos de esta estructura. And we know that we have like a couple of them. So we are going to see the uses. So in this case, let's see this one. It says for instant or spontaneous decisions. And that's why I was saying that in this case, it's not something that we are really, really sure about the things that is going to happen because in some cases we take instant or spontaneous decision just in the moment esto es para eh, decisiones espontáneas que no la o sea no pensamos exactamente o no nos tomamos el tiempo para pensar detenidamente qué acciones van a continuar esto es para cosas que nacen en el momento y en el momento I'm feeling hungry right now so I will eat the first thing that I think in the moment I will eat chicken I will eat shrimps, I will eat uh, soap or something like that. But in some cases, it's not going to be like that because you are going to think in another uh, food that you want to take. So in the first one, instant or spontaneous decisions. So we have the example, I'm hungry, I think, but in this case, I'm not like saying I am 100% sure that I will. So I think I will make a sandwich. Maybe you are going to do it. Maybe you are not going to do it because you are going to see another thing on the kitchen. So in this case, it's just a possibility. I'm hungry. I think I'll make a sandwich. Then we have the number two and it says future predictions based on a belief. Future predictions based on a belief. In this case, when you have a belief, 
is something that you think is going to happen. In this case, it's not something that is, uh, that you have like something uh, scientific or something uh, very accurate that is going to happen. This is something that you believe. Esto es algo que ustedes creen que va a pasar. ¿Por qué? Porque yo lo pensé de esa manera, yo así lo siento y lo predico y that's the reason why I am saying that. En ese caso no es algo científico que de verdad vaya a pasar, como, ah, I see the sky is kind of dark and uh, it's going to rain. So that's not the reason because I am saying that I have a very blue sky and I said it's going, to, I think it will rain. No es lo mismo ver el cielo oscuro con las nubes, con los retumbos y toda la cosa y decir va a llover que ver un cielo azul despejado y decir va a llover because it's not going to happen like that. So in that case, we have something or future predictions based on a belief. And in this case, we have an example, and it says, I'm sure you will pass the exam. But maybe it's not going to happen because something is going to make us forget everything that we study for the exam, or we don't know. So in this case, it's just a prediction. I'm sure you will has the exam. Next one, it says offer, uh, I mean promises. In this case, we are talking about promises. Una promesa. And we have the example. I won't tell anyone your secret. I won't tell anyone your secret. But we know that in some cases it's not going to happen because uh, I will tell my mom because she is the one that, that I like to tell secrets, but it's going to change uh, that situation. So it's not something really good that maybe happen. Then we have offers, un ofrecimiento. Offers. I will, I will carry your bags for you. If we are in the supermarket at the same time, I will carry your bags for you because maybe we are going to be in the same place, but if not, I, I will not do it. So in that case, it's not very sure that we are going to be in the same place at the same time. Then it says that we can use shall instead of will for future time reference with I and we. Cuando tenemos el I y el we, o sea, los pronombres I and we, también podemos utilizar shall, que es otra, eh, es, um, we can say like, it's, um, it's not like a auxiliary verb, but in this case it's a modal verb. Es otro modal verb que podemos utilizar para hablar del futuro. Solo que el shall es más usado con el I y el we. But it's for us, I think, it's better to use the wheel because we feel like very common with the use of wheel. So it is not like many people like to use shall, but they do. But in this case, we feel like more secure using wheel. But we have this option. Tenemos esa opción que podemos utilizar el shall 
cuando hablamos de acciones en el futuro, pero solo con I and we. Este no lo vamos a utilizar con todos los pronombres, sino que simplemente con I and we. And Richard, it, can you write? Shall. Wait. This case. This one. Shall. You can use shall with I and we. And it says that uh, this one is slightly more formal. Este es cuando lo vamos a utilizar tal vez en una situación muy formal. Por eso es que no es tan usado. Pero sí lo podemos utilizar así como el will. Solo que solo se va a utilizar con el I y el we. Y es un poco más formal que el will. En ese Creo caso, que... Teacher... El... Ajá. En ese caso, me imagino yo de que este nunca existe en forma negativa, ¿verdad? Mm -mm. Este no. Solo, solamente en positivo lo vamos a utilizar. O incluso en preguntas. Dicho, creo que en la plataforma hablaba acerca de shall, ¿verdad? ¿no? Mm -hmm. Sí, es que siempre se les da la opción. You can use a shall when you are like making more formal uh, speakings or you are speaking with someone that you don't know and you need to sound more uh, formal in that uh, way. But in this case, it's like we have different forms or expressing in future, but now you have uh, different uh, things that you can use or so you have more uh, vocabulary in this case. And in this case, we have like an example, just one example for this. And we say, we shall never forget this beautiful day. We shall never forget this beautiful day. Es como, no deberíamos olvidar este día tan bonito. O, no, o, o nosotros no deberíamos nunca olvidar este día tan bonito porque nos estamos refiriendo al futuro, que en el futuro no deberíamos olvidarlo. So it's just to express ideas in future, but you can use it or not depending on uh, your beliefs or something like that. Now, we're going to talk about the future continuous. That is the second uh, tense that we have for today. And we are going to have number two, future continuous. You know that when we are talking about continuous and when we are using verbs with ing, that is the base thing of this uh, structure and all the continuous structure that we have in English. Tell me, Brian. Teacher, yo he oído de que del shall deriva el should y del will deriva el would. Sí. Solo que en, en, en condicionado. En... Um, yes, but in that case, uh, we can use it like um, a wood is for past in that case, but they have like the roots, but they are like wool, you are going to use it more for, for things. You can use it for past, but also we can use it for like polite requests or polite sentences, would you please? Would you help me? And something like that. So in that case, it's like they have the same roots, but they are using in a different uh, situations. So in this case, future continues. We use this tense to talk about things in progress at a particular time in the future. When you are using the continuous, you are talking about things that are happening or are in progress in every time that you are using in past, in present, and in future. But the difference in this case is that we are talking about the future. So they are actions in progress in the future time.
So here we have this structure for these uh, tense. And you have will and want plus be plus ing form. When you have a plus ing form is because you are going to use another verb. B is not the, the base verb that you are going to use for this structure. Is the complement of the elements that you are going to use. For example, you have I will, I will be, and you are going to have the uh, the verb in that case. I will be traveling. I will be writing. I will be playing. I will be singing. I will be talking. So in that case, you have that. A, a structure in that a sentence, for example, you're talking with someone and you say that you are going to have a speech. And you can say, I will be speaking at that time. Yo voy a estar hablando en ese momento. Cuando? En un tiempo en el futuro, porque no ha pasado. So in that case, that is the base of this tense. That is actions in progress in the future. So we are going to see some examples like the ones that we did in the first one in the table. So we are going to see how to apply this structure in positive, negative, and in questions. So let's see. So there we have the, uh, the examples of the positive sentence. We have the subject plus will, then we are going to write the verb to be in that, uh, in that way or in that form. Then we are going to use uh, the uh, verbs with the ing form. So we have different examples. I will be working, you will be dancing, he will be cooking, she will be talking, it will be sleeping, we will be writing, you will be swimming, and they will be eating. So now we are going to transform those uh, sentences into negative and then into questions to see what is the form that we are going to use for uh, each of these categories. Teacher, si son negativas, ¿por qué you will? Oh. Igual que he.
So that's why you need to, to keep library focused and don't do things like I am doing because I lose focus in one second and I, I forget to write um, the negative form I was like in automatic. So in that case, it's just losing focus in, in, a, in a second. So don't worry, I, I make the mistake and then I re reaction and say, oh my God, that is a mistake. But we have the negative form and you know that we are going to have two different ways, the contraction and the will not. So we have, I want to be working, you will not be dancing, he will not be cooking, she want to be talking, it will not be sleeping, we want to be writing, you want to be swimming and they will not be eating. When you have the sentence, you can see that in this case, you are just going to add one more word to the sentence that you have, in this case in negative, because that is the only thing that is going to change the way you write the negative. But the other elements are going to be in the same way in the sentence. So in this case, we're not going to change anything else just to make negative. Then in the question, remember that we are going to change a little bit the form of the sentence. In this case, we are going to change the form in which we uh, put the words or the position of the words. So in this case, we are going to use will at the beginning, then we are going to write the subject and then the verb to be with the verb in ing. Así que para la pregunta, en este caso, vamos a escribir will al principio, luego el sujeto, y por último vamos a escribir el verbo be con el verbo en forma ing o en forma continua con la question mark. So we are going to write the questions and that will be, no, in this case I'm going to use, uh, I'm uh, going to, this going to be the last thing that we are, go, that we are going to write because we are, we have just one minute and a couple of seconds. So let's see. So there you have the question. So in that case, you're just changing the way you write the uh, subject and will. So that's the thing. Mm, tomorrow we are going to see the other two tenses that we have in future. And also we are going to have some uh, like exercises in which we are going to uh, put into practice the things that we learn with the future chances. So now we are going to end the session and after this one, we have three more sessions more to complete the module. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in session number two. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. Good night. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.